They say that the kitchen is the heart of the home. And we have to believe it's true. In the kitchen, family cooking traditions are perpetuated and tasty recipes are passed down to the next generation. So let's get to it. Welcome to Carol's Kitchen. Our guest soloist today is Justin Bachman, a senior voice major from Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. He'll be singing three songs for us today, which were a part of his senior recital just a few weeks ago. His accompanist is Charity Tolosig, a junior music major from Crestwood, Illinois. Their first selection is an energetic traditional spiritual Peter, Go Ring Them Bells, arranged by Mark Hayes. Oh, Peter, go ring, Peter, go ring them bells. Peter, go ring them bells, I heard from heaven today. I wonder where my mother is gone. I wonder where my mother is gone. I wonder where my mother is gone. I heard from heaven today. Oh, Peter, go ring them bells. Peter, go ring them bells. Peter, go ring them bells. I heard from heaven today. Sister Mary is gone. I wonder where Sister Mary is gone. I wonder where Sister Mary was. I heard from heaven today. It's good news and I thank God. It's good news and I thank God. News and I thank God I heard from heaven. Today. Oh, Peter, go ring them bells. Peter, go ring them bells. Peter, go ring them bells. I heard from heaven today. I heard from heaven today. I heard from heaven today. I thank God and I thank you too. I heard from heaven today. I wonder where Brother Moses has gone. I wonder where Brother Moses has gone. I wonder where Brother Moses has gone. I heard from heaven today that he's gone where Elijah has gone. He's gone where Elijah has gone. He's gone where Elijah has gone. I heard from heaven today. Oh, Peter, go ring them bells. Peter, go ring them bells. Peter, go ring them bells. I heard from heaven today. I heard from heaven today. I heard from heaven today. I thank God and I thank you too. I heard from heaven today. I thank God and I thank you too. I heard from heaven today. Our main entree being prepared today is chicken divan. And a little history behind my getting this recipe. A good girlfriend of mine, Jan Peterson, shared the recipe with me and I immediately fell in love with it and actually created it in mass for my parents' 65th wedding anniversary celebration for about 40 people. So, and it was a big hit. So I think you're going to enjoy it as well. It's very simple to assemble. You start with one pound of broccoli. This has already been cooked and it's at room temperature and we will place it in a baking dish and I will uh, spray it with the uh, butter spray. and then spread 
the cooked broccoli over the bottom. I'm going to set this aside to prepare the chicken. It's layered. It's the, the broccoli at the bottom, a layer of chicken, uh, and then uh, cheese on the top. So for the layer of chicken, if we start with, uh, I'll set this here, and what we're going to mix on top of the chicken, this is one cup of mayo. I've chosen to use olive oil mayo. It has all the bang of regular mayo, but about half the calories. And so, and I just poured into that a can of condensed cream of chicken soup. And to that, I will add one teaspoon of cumin. Jan actually suggested uh, curry, but that may be a little too zippy for a lot of people's palates, and the cumin is wonderful. So just those uh, three elements together create a cream sauce that will uh, eventually cover the chicken. Some people, instead of the mayo, will use sour cream, and that certainly is a lovely option as well. I took three and a half pounds of, of chicken breasts and cooked them in, in advance and uh, cut them up in uh, chunks. So that will be the, the chicken layer. And we add the mixture of cream of chicken soup, mayo, and cumin to this and mix it up. A little, another option, in fact, this is how I, I, I didn't, this will create more like a casserole, and, and it, it tastes wonderful, it's lovely. Uh, for my parents' uh, anniversary celebration, I used individual uh, pre-cooked uh, chicken breasts and, uh, and put the topping individually on top of each one of the chicken breasts, but this is, uh, very uh, easy to put together. So on top of the broccoli, you pour the chicken mixture. This actually will probably fit with, a, with thinner layers in a 9 by 13 pan. So because everything is already pre-cooked, from this point to the table is pretty short, but it requires some advanced preparation. On top of this, you choose, you put your choice of, of white cheese. Uh, I chose provolone, and so I will top this fairly generously with pro slices of provolone. And you could use uh, already shredded cheese. That would be fine. The final uh, element is paprika. And so you just sprinkle paprika. Not a whole lot. Just kind of eyeball it. and then place it in a preheated oven at 350 and bake it for 18 to 20 minutes and it'll be ready to eat. Justin and Charity will now celebrate the birth, life, and ministry of Christ Jesus as they present Bridget Sheevy's beautiful new song, Depth of Love. Yet 
save this fallen world from sin decay. What depth of love is his, he left his throne for this, to humbly take our cross and bear our shame. What wondrous grace bestowed, what depth of love we owe, we give our lives to lift his holy name. Though innocent he came, our Savior now was slain. Upon a cruel tree our sins he claimed. The soldiers bowed the knee to mock the king of kings. What greater love has any other claimed? What depth of love is his? He left his throne for this, to humbly take our cross and bear our shame. What wondrous grace bestowed, what depth of love we owe. Give our lives to lift his holy name. Though dying lamb he came, he triumphed o'er the grave, fulfilled God's plan and crushed the serpent's head. To heaven he now ascends to sit at God's right hand and take his rightful place as Christ our King. Though Son of Man he came, forever now he reigns, and soon at last we'll see him face to face. And then we'll bow the knee before our rightful King. We'll lift our voice in praise eternally, eternally. What depth of love is his? He left his throne for this, to humbly take our cross and bear our shame. What wondrous grace bestowed what depth of love I owe. We give our lives, we give our lives to lift his holy name. I'd like to start our story today with a riddle. What do Roy Rogers, Mike Tyson, Queen Elizabeth, Picasso, Terry Bradshaw, Walt Disney, and my Uncle Herbie have in common? They all are, or were, pigeon keepers. Who knew? In a way, teachers are a lot like pigeon keepers, and every year, a new flock of pigeons, uh, students, come to us in a wide variety of breeds. Some are turbotines, high flyers, tumblers, and racers. Others are giant runts, fantails, and magpies. And there will always be a few pouters, long-faced, and model-headed in the bunch. But in whatever condition they come to us, it's our job to help them stretch their wings and to realize their full potential for the glory of God. There have been several students, though, whom I've encountered in my nearly 40 years as a voice teacher who seem to have difficulty flying. Why? Because they were captives in their own personal pigeonholes and needed some assistance in breaking free. One of my students, Luann, was stuck in the you're a second class musician pigeonhole. In high school, she always played backup for the A-team musicians a classification she simply accepted as fact. Shocked that I would pull her out of my college voice class for private lessons, she promised not to disappoint me. 
all she needed to escape her pigeonhole was for someone to believe in her. Luann ended up majoring in voice and eventually earned her doctorate in vocal performance. Raquel was a student who got pigeonholed in the you're a hooligan by association category. As a naive 17-year-old college freshman with fashion model looks, she was immediately befriended by the cool people on campus. You know the type, living on the edge, just barely complying, suspected of covert naughtiness at every turn. In the context of private voice lessons, I saw Raquel's heart for the Lord and for service. I encouraged her to audition for a summer traveling ensemble, and she did so. And although the panel was impressed with her vocal ability, they feared she might not be a good fit because of her circle of friends. Upon my recommendation, however, she was chosen for the ensemble. Once her lot was clearly cast with students who were sold out to the Lord, Rachel's cool friends began distancing themselves from her. Today, Raquel, along with her husband and four children, are missionaries in a foreign country. Twyla was a student who relegated herself to the forever condemned for one lapse of judgment pigeonhole. Her reputation had been untarnished until she, along with one smooth-talking guy and a couple immature girlfriends, cooked up a stupid scheme that landed them all in hot water. Genuine repentance kept them from being kicked out of school, but Twyla seemed forever changed. She continued taking voice lessons, for which I was glad, but her joy was gone. Melancholy so consumed Twyla that it was alarming, and I told her so. Did you ask the Lord to forgive you? I asked. Yes. When we confess our sins, the Lord promises to forgive. Do you believe that? Well, yeah. Well, then you need to accept his forgiveness and purpose to live for him from now on. But everyone on campus knows what I did. Twyla, we all are sinners relying on God's forgiveness. In response, we should practice Ephesians 4.32 by being kind to one another, tender-hearted, and forgiving. Tears welled up in her eyes. Thank you so much. That's just what I needed to hear, she said. We cried, we prayed, we hugged. What a blessing that day for Twyla to be released from her pigeonhole prison. Finally, Tori Harga was caught in the you're just like your sibling, pigeonhole. She signed up for private voice lessons at a high school where I taught. She displayed above average raw vocal talent, but was quite shy and retiring. In God's providence, we clicked, both musically and personally. She practiced like crazy, incorporating all my suggestions and made tremendous vocal progress. On a personal level, Tori opened up to me sharing her desire to be more Christ-like and her uncertainty about how to achieve it. So we began having weekly Bible studies at a local coffee shop. One afternoon, I shared with a fellow teacher my joy regarding Tori's musical and spiritual growth. The teacher was astonished. Isn't she Malia Harga's younger sister? I didn't know one way or the other. Well, Malia was a piece of work, got expelled from school. I had no idea. Tori later confirmed that Malia was her sister and asked me to pray Malia would stop running from God. Over time, it became clear to me on several levels that Tori was a victim of pigeonholing based on her older sister's poor track record. Refusing to allow her to shrink back into her pigeonhole, I challenged Tori to enter the end of year voice contest. The competition will be stiff, I told her, You'll be up against some pretty talented singers who've been studying voice for years, but it'll be good for you to prepare for something significant like this. She accepted the challenge. The day of the competition, I just prayed Tori wouldn't freak and fold. She had sung well for me in my studio, but I was uncertain how she would react in front of a live, breathing audience. Adrenaline can really mess with us. All the competitors that day were my private voice students, so I wasn't rooting for one of them over the other. And as expected, the seasoned singers made me proud. Tori was up last and totally caught me off guard. Adrenaline was not her nemesis, it was her new best friend. 
She sang confidently, expressively, and beautifully. As Tori's last note echoed through the auditorium, there was stunned silence. Then came the applause, reticent and sparse at first, but rapidly crescendoing to a thundering fortissimo. In my mind, those clapping hands were tantamount to flapping wings, the sound of freedom as Tori flew out of her pigeonhole and won the day. He gives power to the faint and weary. He gives strength to those who fall. He gives hope to those who stumble, those who strain to give their all. But for those who wait on the Lord, he will surely renew their strength. He'll uphold them with his own right hand above all they can ask or think. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall soar and glide like a bird. They shall run and walk in God's power in accordance with his word. Do not fear the Lord is with you to sustain you and help you stand. He will fortify your weaknesses with the strength of his mighty hand. I'm grateful for the opportunity to have been a teacher all these years. I'm at an age now that I could retire, but why? Pigeon keeping is way too rewarding. The end. Our second item to be prepared today is flaxseed meal raisin bread. For those of you who need to eat gluten-free, it is a wonderful option. I don't have to, but it's a wonderful option for me as well. I really enjoy it a lot. It's very simple to make. You make it in a microwave oven. You mix it all in one uh, container, so it goes very, very quickly. I start with a four by eight container that is microwave safe. For years, I have used, reused a microwave uh, entree tray uh, and used it and it's like about four by eight. So it works perfectly as well. So you don't have to buy something fancy for this. But you start with one egg. one tablespoon of oil. This is uh, corn oil. One packet of sugar-free sweetener. And you could use sugar if that was your preference. And then just mix it all together. And the next element to add is the flaxseed meal. Now you can buy already ground flaxseed meal, but I have chosen to purchase flaxseed. So to turn it into meal, it's uh, easy peasy using my coffee bean grinder. I have one quarter cup of flaxseed poured into here. Pulse it for like five seconds. And then pour the flaxseed meal. Sometimes a little bit of it lurks. Mix that in, but before I mix it completely, I sprinkle it with cinnamon. Probably if you measured it, it's about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then be sure that all the flaxseed meal uh, gets mixed in with the egg, oil, and sweetener mixture. This will make two slices of bread. 
spread it out evenly. If you're not fond of raisins, you could stop right here and, and uh, put it in the microwave. About an eighth of a cup of raisins. Probably just put them randomly around. 20 to 24 raisins. I once read about some gentlemen who were very fastidious about their nutritional intake and they ate 20 raisins every morning. And so when I do this, I think of those men and try to have at least 20 raisins. It's gotta be a reason they had the raisins. And so it's just not sitting on the top. I just take a moment and just kind of press each one in just a little bit so that it becomes more a part of the bread. Obviously, clean hands. And this is the amazing part. Put it in the microwave for a minute and 45 seconds and it will be done. What I have here is a triple batch of the flaxseed raisin uh, bread and I just tripled the recipe and put it into this deep dish, microwave safe dish. And then you can uh, serve it using a pie cutter and it so have pie shaped pieces. Uh, either way, this is to make it for maybe a larger group or what I just made that's in the microwave now uh, for, for you for like breakfast in the morning would be just the perfect portion. And here we go, the flaxseed meal raisin bread. Cut it in half and serve it. You can have, eat it just the way it is, or you can top it with butter or margarine. Uh, today, I'm gonna suggest that you uh, put cream cheese, spreadable cream cheese on the top, and that really kicks it up a notch as well. I think you'll really enjoy the flaxseed meal raisin bread. Composer Stephen Foster is known as the father of American music. How appropriate then that he was born on the 4th of July in 1826. In his brief 37 year lifespan, he composed more than 200 songs, including Beautiful Dreamer, Jeannie with the Light Brown Hair, and Oh Susanna. In my opinion, the funniest song Stephen Foster ever composed is the one that Justin and Charity are now going to present. It's entitled, if you've only got a mustache. Oh, all of you poor single men, don't ever give up in despair, for there's always a chance in this life to capture the hearts of the fair. No matter what may be your age, you always may cut a fine dash. You will suit all the girls to a hair if you've only got a mustache, a mustache, a mustache. If you've only got a mustache. No matter for manners or style, no matter for birth or for fame, all these used to have something to do with young ladies changing their name. There's no reason now to despond or to go and do anything rash. You can do though you can't raise a cent if you'll only raise a mustache, a mustache, a mustache, if you'll only raise a mustache. Your head may be thick as a block and empty as any football. Oh, your eyes may be green as the grass, your heart just as hard as a wall. Yet take the advice that I give, you'll soon gain affection and cash. And we'll be all the rage with the girls if you've only got a mustache, a mustache, a mustache. If you've only got a mustache. I once was in sorrow and tears because I was jilted, you know. So right down to the river I ran to quickly dispose of my woe. A good friend, he gave me advice and timely prevented the splash. 
Now I told my wife in ten airs, and all through a handsome mustache, a mustache, a mustache, and all through a handsome mustache. Well, it's time for taste testing. We'll be taste testing the flaxseed meal raisin bread and the chicken divan, and we'll serve that over a bed of rice. Before we dig in, I'm pleased to say that my husband, John, is here today joining us. And before we do eat, uh, John, would you read our promise of the day, please? Certainly. <clears throat> Psalm 46.1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Thank you. We are being joined at the taste testing table today by two members of the crew, Karen Huseman and Jordan Westenberg. So come on and join us, folks. And we'll sing our blessing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. again. If you'd like a copy of today's recipes or a copy of the song, He Gives Power to the Faint and Weary, call 920-262-4021 or email watertowntv at cityofwatertown.org. This program is available to view on demand at watertowntv.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us next time for Carol's Kitchen. <laughs>